Did you know that the people you surround yourself with can dramatically impact your life, either for better or worse? If you want to thrive, reach your full potential and maintain a healthy environment, you need to be conscious of who you let into your inner circle. The best advice I've ever heard is, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And yet, many of us unknowingly invite toxic personalities into our lives that hold us back, drain our energy, or even sabotage our progress. Avoid this mistake. If you want to move forward in life, you need to be mindful of the behaviors and attitudes of the people around you. Some individuals, whether they're self-centered, opportunistic, or simply resistant to change, can undermine your growth without you even realizing it. Don't believe the myth that people just are the way they are or that you have no control over who influences you. In this video, I'm going to break down the types of people you should watch out for and more importantly, show you how to handle them so you can maintain your peace and propel yourself towards success. So let's dive in and explore the behaviors you need to spot before they become obstacles in your life. Number one, self-centered people. Let's start with a thought experiment. Imagine a day when everything revolves around you, your opinions, your desires, your achievements. At first, it feels exhilarating, like the spotlight is permanently shining on you. But now, shift your perspective and think about the people around you. How do they feel? Excluded? Overlooked. This is the world of the self-centered individual. It's easy to see their charm at first, confident, assertive, and seemingly full of life. But peel back the layers, and you find a personality that can drain even the most patient of souls. Self-centered people often live in a bubble, believing the world owes them attention, admiration, or respect, simply because they exist. They rarely pause to consider others' needs or struggles. For them, relationships often become transactional, a means to an end where the end always benefits them. These people aren't necessarily malicious, but their inability to step out of their egocentric world leaves a trail of strained relationships and discontent. Take a moment to reflect on your past. Think of someone who always seemed to steer conversations back to themselves, no matter how trivial or monumental your subject was. Perhaps it was a co-worker who could turn a heartfelt discussion about your weekend struggles into their own bragging spree about career achievements, or maybe a friend who consistently left you feeling unheard. These individuals often dismiss others' emotions intentionally or not, simply because they're too absorbed in their own. Now here's the curiosity. What causes someone to become so self-centered? Is it insecurity, where they're constantly trying to prove their worth, or perhaps a deep-seated fear of irrelevance? While their behavior can be frustrating, understanding what drives it might make us more empathetic. But at the same time, it forces us to question our own tolerance. How much self-centeredness are we willing to overlook before it becomes toxic? Number two, the opportunist. Picture a charming individual who always seems to be in the right place at the right time. They're quick-witted, resourceful, and seem to know just the right words to say to get what they want. At first glance, they seem like a friend, someone you can trust. But then, the pattern emerges they're only there when it benefits them. This is the opportunist. They aren't just taking advantage of situations, they're taking advantage of people. Opportunists are experts in disguise. They present themselves as allies, often mirroring your values or interests, only to exploit them later. They're not always easy to spot because they know how to play the long game. They might build your trust over months or even years, waiting for the right moment to strike. And when they do, it leaves you questioning everything, your judgment, your relationship, and even your own sense of self-worth. Looking back, 
Have you ever had someone in your life who seemed to disappear the moment you needed them? Maybe it was a colleague who borrowed your ideas to impress the boss only to leave you out of the spotlight. Or a friend who always leaned on you during their tough times but was nowhere to be found during yours. These experiences often leave a bitter taste, a reminder of how quickly trust can be broken. The opportunist raises an unsettling question. How do you protect yourself without becoming overly guarded? Life is about connection after all. But how do you strike the balance between being open and avoiding exploitation? It's a challenge many of us face, and it makes you wonder how often have we unknowingly played the opportunist in someone else's story? Number three, people who create their own illusions. Think about the last time you escaped into a daydream. Perhaps you imagined a life where every decision you made was perfect, where every relationship was fulfilling and every obstacle was easily overcome. Daydreams are harmless, even comforting. But some people don't just visit these fantasies, they live in them. These are the people who create their own illusions, crafting a version of reality that suits their desires while ignoring the truth. On the surface, they might seem inspiring. They're often full of confidence, optimism and grand visions. But spend enough time with them and you start to notice the cracks. Their world doesn't hold up under scrutiny. They avoid accountability, deflect criticism and cling to their fantasies even when reality screams otherwise. It's not that they're malicious or deceitful, they genuinely believe in the illusions they've created. Have you ever had a friend or family member who refused to acknowledge their struggles, instead spinning stories of how everything was just fine? Maybe it was someone who ignored their financial troubles, insisting they were investing in their future while drowning in debt or a colleague who overpromised on a project only to scramble at the last minute blaming external factors for their failure these encounters often leave us feeling frustrated helpless or even guilty for pointing out the truth but here's the twist why do some people cling to illusions so desperately is it fear of failure a coping mechanism to avoid pain or perhaps it's a way to protect their fragile self-esteem Whatever the reason, it raises a fascinating question. Are there moments in our own lives where we choose illusion over reality? And if so, how do we recognize the line between hope and delusion? Number four, people who never admit their mistakes. Picture this, a group project at work goes wrong. Deadlines are missed, expectations aren't met, and the final product is riddled with errors. Amidst the chaos of figuring out what went wrong, there's always that one person who insists, it wasn't my fault. They'll point fingers at every other team member, the management, the market conditions, anyone but themselves. This is the hallmark of someone who never admits their mistakes. At first glance, these people might seem like they're simply protecting their reputation. But dig deeper and you'll find fear fear of being seen as flawed, fear of failure, and most importantly, fear of accountability. By never admitting their mistakes, they avoid the hard truths about themselves and miss out on the growth that comes with owning up to errors. We've all encountered such individuals. Think back to a time when you worked hard to resolve a problem only for someone else to escape unscathed by refusing to take responsibility. Maybe it was a co-worker who let you take the blame for a missed deadline, or a friend who never apologized after hurting your feelings, instead doubling down on their justification. These situations often leave a bitter aftertaste, making it hard to trust or respect these individuals. This brings a nostalgic twist, remember when we were kids, and admitting to breaking something like a vase or toy felt like the end of the world. Yet, once we confessed, there was a sense of relief, even if there were consequences. Somewhere along the way, many lose that courage, replacing it with avoidance and denial. Curiously, 
It makes us wonder, is there a way to inspire these people to embrace accountability? How do you approach someone who is so deeply entrenched in self-defense mechanisms that they refuse to see the benefits of personal growth? And more importantly, how do you ensure that you don't fall into this habit yourself? Number five, those who don't prepare for the future. Imagine living in the present moment with no thought for tomorrow. It sounds liberating, doesn't it? No worries, no anxieties, just pure focus on the now. But this philosophy can quickly turn into a nightmare when the future inevitably arrives and you're caught unprepared. People who don't prepare for the future often find themselves trapped in a cycle of short-term thinking and it's not as glamorous as it sounds. These individuals often live paycheck to paycheck, emotionally or financially. They take life as it comes, but neglect the crucial aspect of planning. From skipping savings to avoiding difficult conversations about long-term goals, their lack of preparation doesn't just affect them, it affects those around them. Family members, colleagues and friends often bear the brunt of their poor foresight. Reflect on a time when someone in your life refused to plan ahead. Maybe it was a friend who repeatedly borrowed money because they didn't budget properly, or a family member who ignored health concerns until they became serious. Their inability to think ahead likely left you frustrated, perhaps even resentful. Here's the nostalgic hook growing up. Many of us were taught to save for a rainy day or always have a backup plan. Yet, some people resist these lessons, choosing instead to live on the edge. Why do they do it? Is it denial, rebellion, or simply a lack of understanding about the consequences? This raises an intriguing question. How can society encourage a balance between living in the moment and planning for the future? And for those of us who do prepare, how do we ensure that we're not enabling the unprepared people in our lives? Number six, people who focus on life's negatives. Imagine walking into a room filled with beautiful decorations, a vibrant atmosphere and joyful conversations. Yet, there's always that one person who notices the chipped paint on the wall or complains about the music being too loud. These are the people who focus on life's negatives, unable or unwilling to see the good around them. At first, their attitude might seem harmless, even amusing. That's just how they are, we tell ourselves. But over time, their negativity becomes exhausting. It seeps into conversations, dampens enthusiasm, and creates an environment of constant criticism. It's as if they're determined to find flaws in every situation, no matter how insignificant. Think back to a time when you were excited about something, a new job, a relationship, or even a personal achievement, only to have someone immediately point out potential downsides. Perhaps it was a friend who warned you of all the things that could go wrong instead of celebrating your success. Their negativity might have made you doubt yourself or robbed you of the joy of the moment. There's a nostalgic twist here. Remember those carefree childhood days when every adventure felt magical, untainted by fear or doubt. Negativity didn't cross our minds because we approached life with curiosity and optimism. Over time, however, many of us develop a lens of caution, which for some transforms into relentless pessimism. Curiously, what drives these people? Is it a defense mechanism to protect themselves from disappointment, or perhaps a habit formed by years of unmet expectations? And the bigger question is, how do you shield yourself from their negativity without becoming indifferent to their struggles? Number seven, people who always blame others for their problems. Have you ever met someone who has an explanation for everything that goes wrong in their life and it always involves someone else? Their relationships fail because their partner was too demanding. Their career stagnates because their boss was unfair. Their financial troubles exist because the system is rigged. These are the people who always blame others for their problems. At first, 
It might seem like they're just venting, but over time, you realize it's a pattern. They refuse to look inward, avoiding self-reflection and responsibility. By blaming others, they protect their ego, but at the cost of personal growth. What's worse, their refusal to take accountability often drags down the people around them, creating a toxic environment where progress becomes impossible. Reflect on your past interactions. Perhaps there was a co-worker who constantly criticized management but never improved their own performance. Or maybe a family member who blamed you for conflicts without acknowledging their role in the disagreement. These experiences can be draining, leaving you feeling like a scapegoat for someone else's problems. Nostalgia takes us back to a time when learning to admit our faults was a painful but necessary part of growing up. Remember the first time you had to apologize for something significant? It might have been humbling, even embarrassing, but it taught you the value of owning your mistakes. Those who blame others miss out on these lessons, stuck in a loop of denial and deflection. Curiously, how do you deal with such individuals? Is there a way to guide them towards self-awareness without being pulled into their blame game? And how do we ensure that we don't fall into the same trap when faced with our own challenges? Number eight, self-entitled people. Picture someone walking into a room, head held high, acting as though the world owes them something. They demand special treatment, complain when things don't go their way, and often disregard the needs of others. This is the self-entitled individual, a personality type that can be particularly challenging to navigate. Entitlement often stems from an inflated sense of importance. These individuals believe they deserve more, more respect, more attention, more rewards, without necessarily earning it. They expect others to cater to their needs and often react poorly when those expectations aren't met. While their confidence might initially seem admirable, it quickly becomes a source of frustration. Think about someone in your life who constantly demanded more than their fair share, whether it was a colleague who expected praise for doing the bare minimum or a friend who always insisted on getting their way. Their entitlement likely left you feeling undervalued or taken advantage of, creating a rift in the relationship. Nostalgia brings us to a simpler time when we were taught to share, to wait our turn, and to appreciate what we had. Those lessons instilled humility and gratitude, qualities that entitled people often lack. It makes us wonder, where did they miss out on learning these values? Here's the curiosity, can entitlement be unlearned? What drives these individuals to feel so deserving? And is there a way to help them find balance? And how do you set boundaries with someone who consistently oversteps them? Number nine, people resistant to learning or change. Imagine trying to teach someone a new skill or show them a better way to do something only to be met with resistance. That's just how I've always done it, they say, unwilling to adapt or even consider an alternative perspective. These are the people resistant to learning or change and their mindset can be one of the most frustrating to encounter. At first, their resistance might seem like a preference for tradition or routine, but over time, it becomes clear that their unwillingness to change isn't about comfort, it's about fear. Fear of failure, fear of the unknown, and fear of losing control. This rigidity often holds them back, preventing growth and innovation. Reflect on a moment when you tried to help someone embrace change, whether it was introducing new technology at work or encouraging a healthier lifestyle. Their refusal to adapt might have left you feeling helpless or even resentful, especially if their stagnation affected you directly. Nostalgia brings us back to the excitement of learning something new for the first time, a new hobby, a new job, or even a new way of thinking. That thrill of discovery and growth is something resistant individuals miss out on, trapped in their fear of leaving the familiar behind. Curiously, how do you inspire such individuals to step out of their comfort zones? Can you lead by example? 
or does change have to come from within? And for those of us who are open to learning, how do we ensure that we don't unintentionally adopt a fixed mindset in certain areas of our lives? As we wrap up, remember, the people you choose to surround yourself with can either lift you up or bring you down. It's important to be intentional about who you allow into your life and how their behaviors might impact your growth. Recognizing toxic traits like self-centeredness, opportunism, or resistance to change can help you protect your energy and stay focused on your path to success. If you're serious about becoming the best version of yourself, it's time to start setting boundaries and eliminating these negative influences. Drop a hundred if you've watched this far that shows you're part of the 0.01% who actually finish what they start. If you're committed to transforming your life and attracting positivity, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Join the movement of people who are ready to take charge, break free from toxic influences, and step into their true potential.